Hi, this is Jeremy Azevedo with Crave Online, and we're here with Christian Lander, the author of Stuff White People. <laughs> Christian, as the foremost expert on things that white people enjoy, what do you think they, they would have to say about this here taco stand? Step one, I have an entry on being the only white person around. So this place is very, very authentic, very legit. And that in and of itself, it's clear to the paradox, right? Like, the great places have no white people around, but white people like that, so more white people come around, then you can't eat there anymore. So it's sort of a uh, it's sort of a never-ending battle then, isn't it? I gotta find these places, I gotta eat here. Then when I see another white person, I have to abandon it and find another one. It's like it takes up a pretty significant po amount of my time. Can you tell us a little about uh, a little bit about your blog? Like, what was the genesis of it? Sure. So, sorry, I'm eating tacos because I'm, oh, I'm very all right, good because I'm hungry. And just I didn't, you know, you don't think about the title. You just wrote in stuff white people like, right. and started writing. And the only intention when I started it was to make my three or four friends who were reading my old blog about college football laugh <laughs> for them to think it was funny. <laughs> then, about three weeks in, I had about 25. I had about 25, 26 posts. I was like, you know what? I'm going to send this to all 20 of my friends. It caught fire. It, it, and so it started January 18th. By the middle of February, there were articles in, you know, uh, the LA Times, New York Times, Wired, Gawker. It was all over the place. Right. By the end of February, I had an agent. By the end of March, I had a book deal. And the book was published on July 1st, and it was a bestseller on July 14th. So six months from, like, an idea that I just started to make my friends laugh to a book being published and making it on the New York Times list. Can you think of a couple more examples uh, that really kind of solidify the uh, the theme of your site? Uh, religions their parents don't belong to, Arrested Development, Sushi, Asian Girls, Japan, Black Music that Black people don't listen to anymore, San Francisco. I really enjoy that. Yep. Um, New York and now Brooklyn too. Hating people who wear Ed Hardy. Um, I hate them. Yeah, of course you do. You don't have a choice. No organic food, farmers markets, gifted children, uh, threatening to move to Canada, uh, Che Guevara t-shirts. Uh, things along those lines. So the wrong kind of white people, the easiest way to describe it is whoever the right kind of white people blame for everything that's wrong in America, mm. those are the wrong kind of white people. Right. So ultra wealthy Republicans, frat boys, white trash, whatever, all the wrong kind. If your blog were a taco, what kind of taco would it be? Carnitas made from Neiman Ranch pork. Yeah. With some mango sauce on it or something? Oh, yeah, it would be, or it would just be one of the Korean tacos. Right. Because we love Asian culture. Yeah. Do you ever think it's kind of silly to like even entertain the notion that a blog about white people is racist? Oh, it is silly. But I, I, I spent four years in graduate school, so it's like my, my definition of what silly is is kind of skewed a little bit. The wrong kind of white people can ruin stuff, something white people like faster than you can imagine. Asian character tattoos. The right kind of white people like those for a little while. Yeah. Gone forever. You know what I mean? Coldplay, same thing. So you gotta be really careful. There's nothing more petrifying than the wrong kind of white people liking something you like. So it's like, it's complicated. But like the biggest fear is if the wrong kind of white people start liking something, it ruins it faster than, than anything on earth. Are the wrong kind of white people reading your site? They don't like sites with too many words. Yeah. They prefer sites with tits and stuff. Right. Have you ever thought about putting some tits or anything on there? You get more traffic? I think I'm good for traffic right now. No. And I think the internet has the appropriate level of tits available. So you have a book also. Yeah about this. Can you tell us a little bit about the book? I mean, the book's called Stuff White People Like, and half of the book comes from the website, and the other half is exclusive stuff just written for the book, and extra um, drawings and charts. So we have flow charts in the book, like how to name a white child, what city should I live in, uh, there's a Mad Lib that you fill in, because you know every time a white person takes a trip somewhere, they send a mass email to all of their friends about how they just got off the plane from Thailand, they met some European that they got drunk with, etc., whatever. It's that email, but you just fill in the blanks. What's in that canvas? Grocery bags, there's a, there's a lot of fun extras, a test to find out how white you are at the back, and all that sort of stuff. The best comedy always comes from truth. What I think what really made the site so popular was, I was being fairly vicious about how pretentious I am as a person. So. I imagine that a lot of people probably ask you for advice on how to become like a big time blogger. Yeah. So what do you tell those poor deluded souls? Don't try. Don't try? Step number one, don't try. I mean look, I'm, I'm as big a fluke as anybody. You know when you buy a lottery ticket and you're like, I know I'm not going to win, but wouldn't it be nice? Yeah. I didn't even have the wouldn't it be nice part in the back of my head. Right. I literally wrote this to entertain four of my friends. You, you never went through that, that phase where you went parading around, gloating and like pissing off your wife and quitting your job and flipping people off or any of that? Quitting my, I did get to quit my job. Yeah. That was awesome. 
But um, it w but it wasn't like I didn't burn the bridge on my way out. I never walked around and gloated because I never forgot how lucky the whole thing was. And every and it was funny. People were like, "When did you know this was big?" And I said, "It's hard to put a date because every day I was like, well, this can't get any bigger." That's a unique attitude that a lot of successful people don't really seem to like to grasp. You know, it's a uh, you know maybe we have something to learn from the humble taco people. You know, that make these delicious tacos for us that we ate, and there's nothing really to see anymore. But they didn't ask for, you know, applause.